welcome everyone uh, for another Zoom session. Today I'm going to share a few things which is so important. Um, we're going to we're going to um, challenge we're going to challenge some of the prevalent thoughts among Christian circle. You know, we're going to dispel some of the things. You know, many people are struggling with demonic attacks. Um, I have encountered demons myself, and I was struggling with demonic attacks. Um, and many people are afraid of demons and uh, uh, today we're going to address some of those things today actually uh, one of the things you know famous among christian circles is generational curses you know uh, curses that is passed on from third and fourth generation we have scriptures in the bible god saying you know i will visit the father's sins up to the third even to the fourth generation so from that verse people have taken some things and then they you know think you know uh, generational curses are uh, operating in my life um, and uh, this is especially prevalent among um, the so-called Pentecostal group you know oh this could be a third generation God is you know visiting God is uh, God is you know um, God is requiring of you maybe your forefathers uh, sins um, why those things are important um, that has become an obstacle for us to release receive anything from God okay I'm going to I'm going to clear some of those doubts today we're going to look at how to develop our heart in the things of God okay um okay uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 18 the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to heal the broken hearted okay we'll stop there because there are few few other statements after that Jesus says which I'm going to go in detail in the subsequent ways today we'll just focus on to heal the broken hearted. So um, why do we have to heal the broken heart? Because you see, without healing the heart, you cannot move forward in anything in life. Okay. Um, we, you go around in circles, you know, the same addictions, the same um, sickness and disease, you know, the same, um, whatever you can put it, the same failure, same weakness, you know, the same, uh, you cannot move anywhere. You, you go around, It'll, the same problem will come to you in different forms, that's all. The same problem, let me say it again, the same problem will come to you in different forms. <laughs> eh? And uh, ultimately you, you pass a self-judgment saying that, now what is wrong with me? You know, maybe, you know, I'm experiencing the generational curse of my fathers. Mm. Yeah, it is true. Uh, but but it's also false. We're going to address these things, so please listen to me carefully. See, the heart that is filled with fear cannot experience healing. A heart that is filled with fear cannot experience healing, um, cannot experience wholeness, cannot experience, um, you know, it, it, a heart that, that is filled with fear is broken. That's what the Bible says, a crooked heart, a perverse heart, a broken heart. You know, um, you know when, the, when, when, when light passes through a prism, it, it diverses, you know, it, it scatters and it splits, it, it is split into uh, different angles and different colors, things like that. So what happens is when truth comes into a crooked heart, see, when you hear the message of the gospel, when you hear and uh, hear, hear, when you hear hear what is God speaking to you in the book, a crooked heart will twist it. Okay, a crooked heart will twist the truth. Sadly, um, all of us, you know, majority of the Christians don't know. I don't know. I don't know for X number of years. Maybe like I, I was born again, the age of seventeen. Um, Twenty-five years of my walk with the Lord, uh, I had a broken heart. You know. Um, so a crooked heart cannot understand, hear God's voice. A crooked heart, even if it hears God's voice, it will twist it to its own belief system. It's the heart that is twisting God's realities into a, into a paradigm, into, a, into something that is lesser than, that is not accurate, that is not uh, pure. See, he's, Jesus is saying, to heal the broken hearted, I have to preach the gospel. So the gospel, the, the preaching of the gospel leads you to the healing of the heart. Okay. Now, um, you know, in our heart, let me just give you a picture. 
Okay. In our heart, our heart, in our heart, there is a boundary. There is a boundary. Inside our heart, there is a, a, a boundary. We are only comfortable living within that boundary. You see, your life, your life up till this point has been going in the direction of within that boundary. This is the boundary in which we live. All of us, for some people, for some people, this boundary could be small. So they're only comfortable living within that boundary. For some people, the boundary might be slightly bigger. We live, we are only comfortable living within that boundary. Anytime our life, our, our life, anytime our, see, imagine you are, this is inside your heart. This is you living inside that boundary. Anytime you try to move past the boundary, what happens is, Life, your heart, your heart will begin to pull you back into that boundary. You get it? You get it? See, many times you know, you, you, there is an invisible boundary within your heart. I'm going to give you the scripture in a minute. Okay. You're only comfortable living within that boundary. Say, for example, if anything good happens to you, say, let's say, let's say you have a boundary of seeing yourself earning thousand uh, dollars a month. If you created that boundary, you will your 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 entire how much of a hard work you do, you will only make thousand pounds a thousand dollars a month. Anytime if your salary goes up, uh, if you if you're given a promotion, if you've been given a promotion or something like that, and they push you, you know, and your salary has gone up a little bit more than you know now you're bound your you know your you, this is a thousand dollar boundary. Now you are actually gone out of the thousand dollar boundary. What happens is, you know, you'll feel so unqualified. You'll feel so unqualified, so unworthy within you. You will either reject that, you know, uh, uh, promotion, and you, you know, fall back within the boundary, or you will feel, you will, you will feel sick. You will fall ill. Actually, you know, you will fall ill. Your body cannot take it. See, this is when I when I understood this, you know, this revolutionized my life. Okay. So many times, you know, my you're only comfortable living within the boundary. Many times we pray and ask God, Lord, uh, give me, give me this, give me that, give me more, give me more. And the Bible is so beautifully explained all these things, you know. God cannot give you anything beyond the boundary that you have built. He can only keep things within that boundary. The moment he gives anything outside the boundary, guess what happens? He knows that will, that will destroy you. This is one of the key points that you need to understand, to understand and to develop your heart. Okay. If you get married, right? If you're only comfortable living as a single person, it, this is inside your heart. The moment you get married, you're gone about outside the boundary. Guess what happens? Now, marriage is such a hard work for you to maintain. Either you squander the marriage or you cannot live happily in, the, in that marriage. Your heart is pulling you back within that boundary. Your heart is pulling you back within that, within that boundary. Okay. Now, let's read, a, let, let's read the scripture. Uh, Proverbs 4.23. You know, it's a very famous scripture. We've read it so many times. So many times, you know. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. That word issue means boundary. You can look it up in Tongues Concordance. That word issue means boundary. You are only comfortable living within a boundary. What is what is what is uh, the word of God warning us? He says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceeds the boundaries of your life. Out of it proceeds the boundaries of your life. If I want to expand if i want to if i want to change my life if i want to experience better quality of life you know the 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 world philosophy says you know get a better job get a, a better um uh, you know 
move house, change your house, uh, move to a country. No matter which country you go to, you will end up with the same lifestyle that, you know, of this boundary that is created. You know, this is, this is, this is, this is what Christians don't understand. Okay. So, yeah, in my spirit, in my spirit, in my spirit, I am the righteousness of God. The logos of, logos of God is written, you know, in my, in my spirit. This logos of God is written in my spirit, but I'm only comfortable living within the boundary. And this, this conundrum, this people can't understand. Why is my life not changing? Why is my life not changing? Whatever you believe about you within your heart, your heart sends a signal from, from within it. It goes infinite distance, bringing the entire world to which you're exposed to in line with that image that you're holding within your heart. You understood? Let me say it again. No matter where you go, your heart is always sending a signal, invisible signal around you, from you, telling people, telling circumstances, telling everyone to treat you in a way that you, how you see yourself within that boundary. With me, have you have you have you heard people saying like that the statements like this? Oh, you know, nothing good happens for me. You know, whatever I do, you know, I start off well and I, you know, I squander it. You know, this has been my issue. You know, this is the boundary. Now, who built this boundary? Your boundary is built by your upbringing, your uh, your our natural, you know, your parents, your siblings, your 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 exposure to to the world in, in which you grew, um, made up of who? Your family, your friends, your, 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 your street uh, neighbors, your schooling, your education, your skin color, your nationality, your birth, your qualification. All these things have created to see how you see yourself and therefore you're only comfortable living within that boundary. If I ask you intellectually, tell me, what, do you deserve uh, Bet, uh, better things in life. Nobody wants their marriage to be uh, marriage to be annulled or marriage to be divorced, marriage to be break down. Nobody wants the health to be health to break down. If the, if you ask if I ask you consciously, do you want your marriage to be broken down? You say, no, no, no. I, I want my marriage to be marriage to be good. I want my health to be good. I everybody wants that, but that's not how the heart understands how you imagine, how you see yourself creates that boundary, you know? So there is a, there is a dis, uh, disconnection or distortion between your conscious mind and the subconscious mind. You understood? This is so powerful, brothers and sisters. This is so powerful, okay? Now, who actually built this boundary? This boundary can go all the way up to, you know, it's actually, it's the generation of people's thinking, the belief system of your heart. How do you believe about yourself? The beliefs of your heart is the boundary. It's your life boundary. It's your life boundary. Okay? This is what can go up to generations. You know, generational belief. Beliefs can be passed on from generation to generation. I read in a book and I studied uh, that aspect, you know. Even the mannerisms that sometimes, you know, people inherit from their parents, you know, the the in, inherent uh, character tra character traits, you know, we uh, sometimes, you know, we see, isn't it, you know, oh, you know, she's, he's like your father, you know, he's like his father or she's like her mother, that kind of statements. Even those character traits are actually cellular imprinting, you know, imprinted because of the beliefs of the heart of the mother, beliefs of the grandparent, beliefs of their parents. So up to three, four generations, the beliefs can actually, you know, form be impressed upon your heart. Okay, this is so important, brothers and sisters. You know, uh, turn to John chapter three. Let me just show you something super amazing there. John chapter three was uh, very was um, was sixteen. We know for God so loved the world um, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now I want to go to seventeen and eighteen and possibly. Uh, yeah, 17 and 18. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through the through him might be saved. Okay, today we're going to understand the good news a little bit, you know, 
clearly. W what is good news? Because I said without hearing the good news, okay, let me put it this way. A heart that is filled with fear cannot be healed. A heart, with, a heart that is filled with fear will continue to function in brokenness. Okay. Intellectually, you will quote hundreds of scriptures. Intellectually, you will tell me, I am the righteousness of God. I am righteous. I all those, you know, I'm not interested. Okay. Intellectually, you might be listening to, you know, famous, you know, televangelists and beautiful teachings. Intellectually, you're all fine. You know, but a heart that is filled with fear cannot be healed. A heart that is not healed will only function within the limited boundary. Within that limited boundary, you will be only getting what you have been getting all your life in different packages. You know, you've been getting the same problems over and over again, the same addiction, the same um, bondages to the things, elements of this world, the same thing, but the only thing is it will come in different packages. You might be addicted to a particular sin for now and you got delivered, but you, you, now you're addicted to a different sin. <laughs> That's all. You see, the, this addiction will jump from one, one package to another different uh, form, but we are still in bondage. I'm going to show you all these things in the scriptures, okay? I pray and hope that, you know, we'll be able to cover all this in this session. Okay, I've got some time. Amen. So for 17th verse again, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. So God did not send to what? Condemn the world. Okay, look at the next verse. He who believes in him, that is Jesus, is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the Name of the only name of the only begotten Son of God. Okay, there's lots, there's lots going on here. I want I want us to understand this, you know, brothers and sisters. You know, I give you full freedom to pass this message to your friends, your family. If you want to, don't you need you don't need my permission. You don't need to write text me say Andrew, can I pass it on to somebody? Feel free to pass it on. In fact, you know, invite even your friends and family to come and watch this series, which I'm going to do. You know, healing your broken heart. This is the message the church needs to hear, first and foremost. You need to hear, you know, internally, you know, vibrate this message internally till you're delivered from this. Okay. So Jesus is saying, you know, he who believes in him is not condemned. Okay. Okay, we'll come there. You see, a heart that is filled with fear cannot be healed. Meaning, fear of what, Andrew? Fear of what? A fearful expectation of punishment. A fearful expectation of something to go wrong. If there is a fear that is built inside every human being, including Christians. Christians, it's actually exaggerated more. Christians not only fear about life, they also fear that you know God may curse them. Fear Christians not only fear for the uh, for the for the life like the rest of the world fears. They also have additional fears because they believe in one true God. And so they know that God is always watching them. They are in, they are in actually exaggerated fear, actually, hyper fear. Actually. Christians are more condemned than the rest of the uh, rest of the world. Okay. So uh, Jesus is saying, you know, so so condemnation, what fear of what? Fear of fearful expectation of punishment. That's what condemnation means. Condemnation means an expectation within you of punishment, having done something wrong. There is something wrong. It mean, how many people have texted me, including, you know, I, you know, I used to think like this. Now when, I, when people text me and say this, say that way to me, I can relate to them. What is wrong with me, Andrew? <laughs> what is wrong with me, brother? What is wrong with me, Andrew? What is wrong with me? Okay. So that question stems from that I'm talking about. You're functioning, thinking within that boundary. What is wrong with me? Why am I unable to get delivered from this addiction? Why am I not able to get out of this problem? You know, um, we're going we're gonna to come to that, okay? Uh, you know, I pray that you listen to this message at least a few times and let the Holy Spirit minister to you. So a fearful expectation of punishment, a fearful expectation of judgment, a fearful expectation, that is what condemnation is for. You know, when the heart is filled with the fear of condemnation, fear of uh, you know, punishment, that heart cannot be healed. Okay. Condemnation. That's what condemnation actually means. You know, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, let's read, um, you know, that's the passage you know, in which the, we talked about communion. Um, verse number 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Okay? That we may not be condemned with the world. Now, go back to John chapter 3. What did Jesus say there? Jesus said that those who believe in him will not be condemned. Those who believe in him will not be condemned. Those who does not believe in him are condemned already. Who condemned the world? Who condemned the world? Who? Who did that? Adam condemned the world. Not God did not condemn the world. God did not condemn the world. Who condemned the world? Adam condemned the world. By, by, by exercising free will and choice, he chose a life. He chose to walk after the flesh than the spirit. By that, he brought condemnation upon the whole wide world, a fearful expectation of punishment. So from that day onwards, the whole world is running away from God. Hiding behind uh, the, fi the fig leaves of our own making. Different types of fig leaves. You know, knowledge, scientific knowledge is a type of fig leaf. Religion is a type of fig leaf. Um, including religious Christianity. You know, Bible reading, you know, holy living is a type of fig leaf. All these are fig leaves. Oh, I have to live holy. Otherwise, I cannot go before God. Okay. So, oh, I have to, be, I have to, I have to pay tithing. Otherwise, no. Um, I cannot go before God. So we, everyone, Christians are more uh, condemned than the uh, rest of the world. Okay. So Andrew, are you saying you should not read the Bible or you should not live a holy life? No. You should live a holy life. You should, you know, give your money and tithing and all that kind of stuff. You, you know, you should be, you know, uh, liberal in, in your giving. You should be liberal in your uh, holy living and righteous living. If that's how you, you're relating to the Lord, you have a heart issue. You have a boundary. Okay. You have a boundary and you will function within the boundary. So Jesus is saying, you know, you're already, the son of man has come not to condemn the world because they're already, who condemned them? Adam condemned them. Now he's, now let's turn to 1 Corinthians 11. Jesus, here, Paul is saying, you know, if, 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 but when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. So the world is already condemned. Paul is saying, we have to judge ourselves so that we don't experience the condemnation the world is experiencing. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? If, you, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I don't want to experience condemnation, so if, if, I, if God did not condemn me, if Adam, condemned, Adam brought condemnation into me, this condemnation is a root of all misery in our life. Sickness, disease, poverty, Failure, breaking of marriage, relationship problems, all these things are rooted within the, that, that emotion, that the feeling of condemnation. Condemnation is the root. Condemnation, you know, sin and condemnation and guilt and all these are, you know, <laughs> correlated to each other. Deep down we are condemned and this condemnation is what is bringing the issues of our life, okay, it's, it's created a boundary and we're only happy within living within that boundary. When something goes wrong, some, when something goes wrong in our lives, say, you know, you've been diagnosed with some health problem or your marriage broke down. You know, most of them, we say, oh, he was such a wonderful brother. He always went to the church. He always, you know, did good things. I don't know why God allowed this in our lives. Have you, you know, have you heard people, have you thought like that? I have thought like that because I went through sickness. Why God is allowing me, allowing this, allowed this in my life? Or why God, some, the worst form is God put this upon them. So now one group has escaped, one group doesn't think that way, but still they think, why God, God could have stopped, God could have stopped. God cannot stop anything in your life, brothers and sisters. The boundary within you, it's, it's your heart, it's the boundary. Boundary within the heart, which is allowing and disallowing things in, your, in our lives. You, you know, you'll have to understand that. You know what? Is the devil involved in this? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to come to that. You know, I'm going to come to that in a minute. So before that, you know, I just want to uh, linger around this point, you know, for, for a few minutes. Okay. So Paul is saying we take communion. In our communion, we judge ourselves correctly so that 
we will not be condemned with the rest of the world aha uh -huh. can you see it now in when i take communion i'm judging myself correctly i'm judging myself correctly so that i will not be condemned with the rest of the world let me just go and show you what i taught last week and then we'll touch on this generational curses okay in in exodus chapter chapter 3 uh, chapter 34 rather um you know this this moses goes to the mountain top with the new tablet and moses goes on to say you know god goes on to say you know uh, uh you know um i will visit your the the sins of the father uh, and the um to the third and the fourth generation okay what does that word visiting means i don't know what that means from that people say see look you know up to three four generations you know sin the effects of the sin can be um god god will punish you god will require of your generation when you sin god will require of your generations what you have done you know exactly opposite there is a verse like that there is a verse that that tells exactly opposite of that that god will not punish your sons for the father's mistake do you know that it is in ezekiel chapter 18 you can read that later god said i will not this i will not um, punish the children for the father's mistakes neither will i pun punish the fathers for the children's mistake so there are two scriptures here polar opposites so even if you want to build a, a, a theology build an expose based on deuteron uh, exodus 34 you know god will punish up to three generation four generation how are you going to square that with this scripture same old testament it says i will not punish the children so how do you understand the word visiting you see that's a, that's a, that's where we we lost it how did we understand the word visiting means okay so uh, you know let me just go and show the previous uh, you know okay so here is adam he looks very sad because he goofed it up and you know we we i explained all these things um last week okay now now here am i right let's say here i am here i am okay this is i am the fourth generation here is the third generation here is the second generation here is the first generation so i am experiencing health problem sin problem sickness problem whatever problem it is i am going through some problem here and third generation second generation you know first generation god is visiting me god you know i'm experiencing the generational curse this is where you know christians love this topic generation curse how to break generational curses how to fight you know um all this generational problems that i'm experiencing in my life and um oh you know you have so many teachings in this uh, in this um, along this line you know especially very famous among um particularly african group of preachers you know gods you know how to you know kick devil out how to how to you know the satan is you know generationally this curse is coming in your life and it's true uh, you know the particular family line will be suffering from the same problem over and over again uh, because there is a de devil operating in their life it's true so so what they are saying uh, they that in their experience is true up to third generation fourth generation so there is a big issue oh, i need to pray special prayers to find out which you know your great grandfather he might have worshiped the uh, devil or he must have murdered i have to pray and find out seek from the holy spirit you know who did this and then i have to break the curse and all those things okay and this is big business many believers are going and putting their head you know brother you know going through this because we are in need right when when you are in need and somebody says like that you don't know nothing you say oh maybe you know you please pray for me and there is a big business also going on i heard you know 25000 rupees to deliver to come from one devil 50000 rupees to deliver from two devils i heard actually in india this kind of things is happening i was shocked i said hey bring them all to me i will deliver them all in one night <laughs> you know let's become a big a big business and pack up you know settle down in life hey eh? you know why they have heard the gospel people have heard the gospel that's the that's the truth brother so here i am i for the generation i'm struggling with particular whatever it is you know cancer heart disease um, diabetes whatever you know so what happened is this belief that belief has created a boundary within your heart and your heart is bringing that 
problem upon you and you think, ah, oh, that it ties up, my experience ties up with that theology, therefore that must be true. You see, it's becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy. But hey, but you don't know your it's the heart's doing it. I think the devil is doing it. Yes, the devil is only doing it because your heart is pulling the devil towards you to bring the problem. Okay, now what happened is, but here I am in 21st century, you know, three, four generations, you know, here I am in the 21st century, you know. Here I am in the 21st century. What is, what is my problem? I, I might be the fourth generation uh, in my family suffering from the same problem. You might be uh, the fifth generation, fourth generation. Hey, the Bible says, you know, God is, you know, mess up your problems, you know. So you beg God, God, uh, please, Lord, you know, what should I do to, when somebody say, you know, you pray, you pay your tithe, money, you know. And you don't give your money, you miss the money and the problem increases. So, oh no, last week, last month, I didn't pay. That is why. Did you pay tithe properly? Oh, that is why. Did you come to church? You stopped Bible reading. You're not very active in the church. No matter. These are things happening. All these things was only confirming your experience. It's only reinforcing your experience. Because why? There is a boundary within your heart. You are only comfortable living within the boundary. It's your heart that is doing this to you. And you didn't know that you are going from one preacher to another preacher, one devil to another devil. You chase one devil, some, some other devil comes. Why? There is something within you, a boundary, and you are, this is the belief of your heart that is doing these things. Now, what happened on the cross? Now, I died on the cross. Where am I here? I went to the cross. I went to the cross. I died on the cross. I might be the fourth generation guy with, you know, with sickness and disease. I went to the cross. I was buried in the tomb. I was risen with him. And I am here in him in 21st century in my heart. My spirit is restored. Now tell me which generation I belong to. I don't belong to this generation, brothers and sisters. They all died in him. I am the first generation of the new creation man. Oh, you get me excited on, 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 on preaching this topic. If you don't see that way, you will create a boundary within your heart and your heart will bring this problem to you and still what? You're just going back to. You know, my grandfather, you know, he had, uh, he was a murderer. And maybe his father, you know, he's all, we are all rapists you know, in the family. You come from this particular, you know, uh, subpopulation, something, you know. Brothers and sisters, I might look like an Indian, talk like an Indian, smell like an Indian, but whether you like it or not, I am born again, risen with him. I belong to the first generation man. There is no other generation before me. Eh? There is no other generation before you. All the generation died. All the previous generation was crucified with in Christ. You were crucified in Christ. You are born and you are born and you are risen with him. Now, what happens is, see, brothers and sisters, let me just go back to that. You're functioning within that boundary, right? You look at your skin color and say, maybe my I'm skin color is dark. That's why no, no girl is looking at me. Maybe I'm educated. I'm, maybe I'm not uneducated. Maybe I have a bald head. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe all these things. You know, you're trying to change the outer, you change the you change everything, you change the attire, you change one country. If I go to the other country, if I get the other job, if I get this, you keep on growing, growing, but you live within that boundary. Why? You're still connected to the old man. The old man is the old man is crucified. Now, here is the thing, brothers and sisters. Your heart does not, your heart functions outside reality. Sorry, your heart functions outside time. The reality of the heart is what you believe in your heart. If you believe that I my father is the, this guy here. He, he looks more thicker and uh, he looks this, you know. You know, my father is, you know, uh, had, had this problem. And therefore, I'm expecting a fearful expectation of what? Punishment. A fearful expectation. Your heart is expecting the reality of your previous generation and you end up experiencing that. Because why? Your heart is outside of all this. Your heart is outside time. Your heart does not understand time. If you believe, if you, the moment you start thinking and believing in your heart that this is what happened to my forefather, that's, that's what it's going to happen to me, your heart will bring it to pass. 
let me just give you a very, very astounding truth. This is the only, this is the reason by, this is the reason why the medical profession cannot find the origin of any diseases. There are about five doctors in sitting here. All are very senior to me. Dr. Iftan, Dr. Irene, Dr. Ting, Dr. Kingsley, all these guys are very knowledgeable. Some are double doctorates, some are, you know, PhDs and, you know, Dr. Iftan has got a PhD, Dr. Dr. Stephen Ting has got a PhD, you know. Me and Dr. Stephen Ting, you know, when they call me, he calls me, you know, we have a good laugh about these things, you know, especially about coronavirus. You know, we have a very good laugh. You know why? None, you, you, you go to your doctor, right? You, if you have a health problem, nothing wrong in going to the doctor. You go to the doctor, you ask him politely, sir, why, why this problem came to me? You are, okay, you find Google, Google and find the cause of any disease. Nobody can find the disease. Nobody. Yesterday I was counseling a couple, you know, the sister is going through some health problems and a wonderful sister, but you know, a um, lot of issues in the heart, things like that. He asked me, that brother asked me, um, doctor, um, you know, this problem my wife is going through, the medical profession is not giving me any clear answer or you know, they don't know the cause. They still, it's a very simple um, uh, health problem. You know, it's a very simple problem. You know, they're unable to find what is the cause of this. I said to them, you know, whispered into me. See, actually the truth is they don't know the cause of any of the diseases. Any. Why, sir? Why? Because the, the problem the problem is inside the heart. Suddenly you might think, you know, oh, are you saying even the children, you know, they are born with this condition? What did they do? What did they do? They were inherited with a cellular memory from their parents and their forefathers. Uh, so what happened is, brothers, as long as you think, as long as you think here, yeah, as long as you think, I belong here. We put him back here. As long as you think, I am the fourth generation suffering from my fathers. What happened is, but if I ask you, did Jesus die on the cross? Yeah, yeah, I believe Jesus. We mentally agree a historical incident. Did Gandhi live in India? Yeah, yeah, Gandhi lived in India. Did Buddha live wherever he lived? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did Nelson Mandela live? Yeah, yeah. Did Jesus live? Yeah, yeah. He, he lived in 2000 years ago in, you know, I want to go to the Holy Land to see his tomb and, uh, you know, uh, I want to go to the Holy Land to, you know, to, it's a very Holy Land. Yeah, it's wonderful. You can go there. But the problem is, as long as we are connected with the old man in our thinking, we are still experiencing the reality of the old man. Who's doing that? Because you create a boundary within now. And the boundary is constricted by everything that you know about the old man. You know, everything that you come to learn about yourself through your education, your upbringing, your, 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 your origin, your family origin, your family, this, that. And that. Have you noticed in the Bible? <laughs> you can go and look at it. You, know. you, might, you might notice now after I say it. None of the apostles wrote about the parental origin. None of them. And they asked Jesus, Jesus, you know, we, we know who this fellow is. He said, I'm from above. Well, my father, you know, I've come from the father. I'm going back to the father. I, this is what he was talking to Jesus. So, okay, we'll, we'll say Jesus is at least the son of God. Who's your father? Who's my mother? Those who does the will of my, you know, father is my brothers and sisters, you know. When they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, you know, your mother is waiting outside. Oh, dear me, time's up. Huh? The mother is, you know, Jesus said, you know, your mother is waiting outside. Who's my father? Who's my mother? You know, those who does the will of my father is my, you know, brother, sister's mother. And None of the apostles wrote about the parental origin. I know I, Peter, you know, the son of uh, so-and-so and, -so and uh, you know, uh, Mr. So-and-so and, -so and uh, writing to you this episode because, you know, I'm an elder in the church. You know, go back to the book of Jude today and read, the, study the book of Jude, only one chapter. You know, the first, first few verses, Jude says, Beloved, I pray that you will contend earnestly for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. Contend for the faith 
Fight for the faith. Guard it. Faith. Why? By the time Jude is writing the epistle, the church is already beginning to be corrupted and polluted with the nonsense that we are experiencing. Why? We missed the cross. We left the cross as an event in history. We know about the cross. We can even go to the tomb in Israel and, and go, into, go to pilgrim and see all those beautiful things. I know, I've been to the oh, there was a holy presence of God. Yeah, you experience those things when you go there. Not because there was holy presence in that land. That's because your heart is exaggerating the experience inside. You get it? It's all your heart is doing this, brothers and sisters. It's your heart that is doing it to you. What you think upon, meditate, ponder, and you know, that's what is exaggerated. So here is the truth. If you miss the cross, you will go back to the third and the fourth generation here. And you are, you, you will function with a broken heart. But if you if the cross is becoming a living reality within you, within you, what happens is what as he is, so am I, as he is right now, so am I in this world, as he is. So am I in this world. So I, if I want to know me, I should not look at my father, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather because all the generation came to a screeching halt on the cross. He was their last Adam, brothers and sisters. But after him, there is no more Adam. You are not in Adam, but you are in Christ. Therefore, what is real for him is real for you. When you begin to think like that, when you begin to meditate like that, when you begin to ponder, and this is the labor that we are, we are encouraged to do. You, if you are not laboring this way, no amount of doing nothing will change your life. If you're interested in changing your life, just stay with me and do what I'm telling you to do. Go into the closet, shut the door behind and persuade your heart and see your death on the cross. If you're not doing that, nothing will change your life. You get the same problem in a different package. Many people don't understand. I don't know why. I don't know why. This problem coming again and again. You see, the devil wants you to bypass the cross. Why? The devil wants you to function in the intellectual realm. He will want to function in terms of, hey, your father, your father had, hey, my father died in the cross. I am born of a different father. Thank you, Lord. 1 John chapter 3, verse 9. Read this verse, write it, underline it, and meditate on this verse. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for, the, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because. He has been born of God. You have the seed of Christ in your heart. Whoever is born of him cannot sin. Cannot, cannot. John is so bold in his saying, saying he cannot. Why? Because you are not from this guy. You are from a different guy. You cannot. Why? His seed remains in you. If you think about it, if you're a gardener, if you put a seed and if you don't nurture the seed, what happens? The seed will stay dormant. The moment you nurture the seed, what happens? His seed remains in you. The incorruptible seed, the word of God. Brothers and sisters, don't go to 100 preachers. If you want to listen to different 100 preachers, feel free, no problem. Don't go from one preacher to another preacher looking for an answer. The answer that you're seeking is in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You don't need another man to lay hands on you to deliver you from sickness or Satan. You are, you have the seed of Christ in you. You know, when you understand this, when you understand this, the fear of Satan will go away. Why? Because Satan, oh, okay, I'll, I'll finish shortly. Satan was pinned to the cross. So, you know, did you hear what I said? Satan was pinned to the cross. How did Satan was pinned to the cross? Jesus became a flesh. When he became the flesh, when he became a flesh, the strength of Satan is what? Is the flesh. The strength of Satan is what? Is the flesh. When Jesus became a flesh, when his spirit died, you know, separated from the Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Satan was pinned. In other words, all the power and authority Satan had was nailed to the cross. 
he was impelled satan has no devil no no, no demon from hell has no power over him one person wrote to me you know said to me brother somebody committed you know suicide in this house and uh, you know the devil you know we have to move we are thinking of moving house you know i didn't say anything that's fine you know that's fine you can move house you know you go to next house and you found out that uh, the guy who built the house is uh, is a murderer oh no now this house is you know haunted now oh i have to go to the next house so you go to the next house and you found that the owner uh, is uh, much more a sinner oh no no i can't live in this house you know his you know pujas you know hindus are you know worshiping uh, you know idol how can the holy spirit come to the to this house hey you went in there the holy spirit is there brothers and sisters these are all mystical mindset you know we are ch- we are running after the devil we are finding a place you know a holy place maybe go to jesus tomb and stay there maybe that is the most holy place you know and then you stay in say oh i'm very sad because i'm in the tomb of jesus when we start running from the devil there is no stopping there is no stopping you will run from one house to one another house on the on the day you realize i'm dead with with him on the day he was impaled on the cross you are running stops why if anybody has to run it is the devil has to run not you <laughs> if anybody has to run from you it has to be the devil who has to run from me not the other way why because i am risen with him all power and authority has been given unto me that's what jesus all power and authority has given unto me therefore go you know what when you go devil cannot stand in front of you unless and until you believe oh no 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 i am you know my father is you know he's a great sinner therefore you know i have to have some sort of you know special covering upon me there was a man in the old testament this is a living reality the, the, look at the thoughts of the old testament man he said even if i make my bed in hell oh lord your presence is there where will where do you think most number of devils will be there if there is a place where empty number of devils is the devils are gathered it should be hell right <laughs> it may not it, it may it may it may not be your house you know there is another place where there is more devils it must be hell right that's where you know and there is a man who look at his thinking even if i make my bed in hell lord your presence is there psalm 139 now in the old testament man is saying lord even if i go to hell where can i go from your presence he developed a living reality he developed a, an internal awareness christ in me the hope of glory christ in me is the awareness he developed even in the old testament because why he developed why could he think like that because he is common in relationship with god wherever he goes god goes wherever he goes god goes God is inseparably united with that covenant man because God cannot break that covenant and though he understood the covenant he said Lord even if i go to hell even there your presence is there like that he is thinking 2000 years later the cross we are thinking if i stay in the house you no know, the devils are here i have to run from this house no 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 brothers and sisters we haven't heard the gospel that's what i'm trying to say we haven't heard the gospel when you understand the gospel of jesus christ the gospel of the kingdom no devil can stand against you and prevail you can sleep in your bedroom hundreds of devils will come you know let them all look at you and say i thought about my go to sleep hi how are you you go to sleep you can just simply sleep peacefully even in the you know even in the even the devil watching they are so scared of this truth brothers and sisters they are so scared of you why they are so scared of you because when they see you in your heart they they see you who they see christ in you but when you see in your heart you see you see here you don't see here so what happens is they see you know they they, they the way you see yourself is the way they see you your intellectual mind through which the five senses operate carnal mind is the devil's workshop do you understand what i'm saying so when you look and say oh i think i'm a sinner you told the devil i'm a sinner so he will attract all towards you 
The moment you look and say, no, 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 I am the righteousness of Christ, you know, because I'm already healed. What happens is the devil will lose his power. Hey, come on, go tell him, go, go just somehow persuade him to think that he is not that guy. He still got his, you know, the genes of his father. Therefore, he has to be sick. So you go to some doctor, you go to some, they will only look at what your physical condition, they will only, they can only tell you what, uh, what they can see with the rest. They are all good people. We have blessed them, you know, they are try, trying to keep all of us alive. You know, all the all the all the all the uh, people you know all the human beings alive but you are not just the human being you are holy ghost oh, my time is up brother and sister thank you this evening lord father we praise you we worship you we, we honor you we adore you lord father help us lord to become disciples of yours help us to become lord your disciples that we will we will desire to live the way you live, Lord Jesus. Open our eyes of our understanding. 